what we're going to do is make sure that we take advantage of this whole idea that exponentials, <coughs> indices, right, and logarithms have this kind of inverse special relationship, right? One undoes the other. We're looking at the same kind of situation, namely proportional growth. And we're just looking at it from two opposite perspectives. So every index law that you're pretty familiar with, like back from year seven and eight, okay? Every index law has its equivalent log law, which some of which we've actually been using a little bit, but we want to make sure they're firm in our heads, okay? So on the left-hand side, what I'm going to do is have all of these index laws. There's, I've got one, two, three, four, five of them. And then we're gonna have an equivalent log law that goes with it. So these will be the log laws. I'm drastically running around out of space, but we'll see how we go, okay? Start real, real basic, okay? So the first one I have to think about is what we call the zero index. When you take any number, I'm just saying A is any number, and you raise it to the power of zero, what's the answer? It's always one, right? Very good. Now this is a basic index law and it's got an equivalent log law. How would we rewrite this equation, not as an exponential equation, but as a log equation? If I write log base, the base of this will become the base of this, so it's still base A, very good. But here, my numbers sort of rearrange a little bit. What's my argument going to be? It's going to be one, very good. And therefore what I get is the last number is a Zero, right? So you can have any base. If you're taking log of any base of one, your answer is zero. So this is just looking at the same thing, but from the opposite direction. Stay simple. A to the power of one. This is the identity index. So when you raise anything to the power of one, you get just the base that you got back, right? Okay, let's think. What's the equivalent log law that goes along with this? I can just rewrite the same equation. Log base A of A equals 1. Very good. So you're like, okay, base is A, if the argument's the same number, you're going to get an answer of 1, and this comes from over here. These are simple. Now let's just amp it up a little bit, okay? One of the first things you learn with your index laws is when you multiply numbers that have the same base, right? So we would generally write it like so. If you've got the same base on both sides. They're both twos, or they're both threes, or they're both eight hundreds, and they've got different powers. What do you do to those powers? Um, a, equals n plus n. a to the power of n plus n. n plus n. So when we're multiplying these, we add the indices. Now when it starts to get tricky, right? What does the log equivalent of this look like? Well, everything is kind of reversed. The positions of everything have swapped around, okay? So remember how you said here, multiplying exponentials means adding those indices, right? Say that again. Multiplying exponentials means you add the indices. Here, it is exactly backwards. So when you add logs, let's take two logs, like say log base A of M, and if you add that to log base A of a different number. So again, it's the same idea of the base being identical, but over here, multiplication turned into addition. This addition, what do you think that turns into? Multiplication, it's everything reversed, right? So the base stays the same, but in here, the argument is going to be, you told me multiplication, right? So it'll be m times n, mn, right? mn, okay? Um, we could do this in reverse, right? So if you didn't multiply, if you say, what's the opposite of multiplication? Div division, right, very good. What do we do with these indices? What happens? Same thing, but it's, but it's negative, right? So instead of adding them, my indices are going to be subtracted, right? Yeah, I minus them, yeah? Okay, now come over to log land over here. Log base A of some number. And here, see how division turned into subtraction? Well, here, subtraction is going to turn into division, right? The ghost of A block returns. Okay, so you can see here, here's my subtraction. And then what it turns into is m divided by n, m divided by n. Okay, so there's this division. Okay, now this has some important implications. For example, let's think about uh, doing something like this. Let's just go back to this multiplication one. We saw it's got this application. This is what happens when you do the opposite. What happens when you do this but repeatedly? So if I had a to the power of m and I multiplied it by a to the power of m, and did it a whole bunch of times, right? So in other words, I'm raising a power to another power, okay? Like so. What happens to this? 
Yeah, my indices are going to multiply here. Now think about why this is, okay? Maybe you want to jot this down in another color underneath. Let's just think about some examples of this, right? If I had a to the power of m and I was squaring that, um, what's that an abbreviation for? It's a to the power of m times itself. Do you agree? That's what squaring is, right? So this would be the long form, which is rather inefficient. That's why we don't write it like that. That would be the long form, right? But come back to this rule up here. What happens when you multiply these two numbers? Yeah, it's going to be m plus m. That's a to the power of 2m. So you can see where that multiplication comes from, yeah? Um, you probably don't need me to rehearse, but if I did this to the power of 3, how would it be different? a to the power of m times a to the power of m times a to the power of m, and you're going to add all those indices, right? m plus m plus m, you get 3m. So do you see why that works? Okay, come over here. You have to think for a second, right? What's the equivalent of this guy in logs? Hmm. This one is taking a to the power of m and multiplying repeatedly, however many times you want, n times. So here, remember how multiplication turned into addition? So what do you think I should do here? I'm not going to repeat multiplication over and over again. What am I going to repeat? I'm going to repeat addition, right? So I'm going to add log a m, log base a of m. I'm going to do this and add it to itself over and over again. If I add it to itself n times, then I'll have n lots of them. Do you agree with that? Does that make sense? So I'm repeating addition here. Yeah. What does that become? When you add logs together, what did this tell me? You're multiplying, right? So here, how many times are you multiplying m by itself? That many times, however many times you added it, right? So that's why this is what we call the power rule, right? You told me to multiply m by itself n number of times. So that's why this n kind of uh, sneaks up the top here. Basically, it's just a special version of this guy, but instead of two different numbers, I've just got the same number over and over again repeatedly, okay? Now, where this thing goes is, um, actually there's not a separate index law for this, but it's an application of this. This change of base law, right, which we've used here, you need to know where it comes from and you must be able to explain it. The short answer is, it comes from here. First, let's just state it. If you've got some log, right, and you're like, I don't like the base being A, A is like a weird number, it's really hard to work with, right? I can change this base using a fraction. Right? So I just have some other logs, and you can really choose any base that you like. So I'm just going to call this x. It could be base 10, which is on your calculator. It could be base e, which is also on your calculator. And then what goes here in the arguments for each one? Yeah, Will? B on top and A on the bottom. B on top and A on the bottom. Precisely. It's easy to remember because this bottom number goes to the bottom, and then this top number goes to the top. Okay. Now, this is good. I can know it, but you have to be able to prove it. So I'm going to show you how once I find where my eraser is. Okay. Underneath this, you've got this list here. Maybe you want to make a little subheading for yourself, which is proving change of base law. Proving change of base law. I'll do it over here so you guys can have that space. 